Hello. Here we discuss the definition of the Cobb Douglas production function and a couple of its properties. The definition is right here. F denotes the production function. It has two arguments. The, in economics, they are called inputs. K stands for capital. L stands for labor. So the dependence of the output F of KL on capital and labor is this. Okay. Usually students do not understand the role of the exponents alpha and beta that we ha have here. We assume that both of them are positive. Okay. And the best way to learn something about the role of those alpha and beta is to do a little exercise. We ask ourselves a question. What happens to the output if the inputs are doubled? Okay. And this means that instead of original K and L that we have here, we use twice more capital and twice more labor. And then, according to the definition, we have to plug 2K here, to l here, then we can pull out that 2 to the power alpha and he from here 2 to the, to the power beta, and the result will be this, 2 to the power alpha plus beta. The rest of it is what we had before, K to the power alpha times L to the power beta, which is our F. It is written here. Okay. So if we compare what we have on the left and what we have on the right, if we double the inputs, okay, then the output will grow by this factor. And this explains the role of that sum alpha plus beta. Okay. For example, if alpha plus beta is larger than one, then doubling of inputs results in growing the output by more than one. Okay, and, uh, and there are two other cases when alpha plus beta is equal to one, alpha plus beta is equal uh, le is less than one. So when alpha is plus beta is larger than one, we say that we have the production function exhibits increasing returns to scale. When it, it is equal to one, then the production function exhibits constant returns to scale here. And when alpha plus beta is less than 1, we the production function de de exhibits decreasing returns to scale. Okay, The sum alpha plus beta cannot be less than 0 because from the very beginning we assume that each of the numbers alpha and beta is positive. Uh, and uh, next, uh, a minute from now, I want to show you the geometry of those cases when of different uh, of the behavior of the production function when we have increasing constants or decreasing returns to scale but right now i want to look at the generalizations of what we did here here we simply doubled the inputs but we can ask a more general question what happens if we scale the inputs by some parameter like here for example we take some positive parameter t and instead of the original k and l here we consider scaled k and l by that parameter tk and tl then we can repeat that the simple algebra that we did here so from here we can pull out t to the power, power alpha from here t to the power beta and the result will be that in front of the production function there will be this factor t to the power alpha plus beta okay so a property like this is called homogeneity. Homogeneity and of degree alpha plus beta. The power that we have here, alpha plus beta, gives us the degree of homogeneity. It's a useful property to remember and it explains the, uh, the intuition behind, behind those names, increasing constant and decreasing returns to scale. So now let us look at the um, visualization of those different cases in Mathematica. I am using here the function plot3d. So this is, we can recognize that this is the Cobb-Douglas production function. Alpha is equal 1.5 and beta is equal to 1.52. Okay, and here is the plot. Okay, we see the origin is right here at the left right, at the left lower corner. This is the origin where capital and labor are equal to zero and correspondingly the output is equal to zero. So 
as capital and labor grow, you can see that output is growing. And in particular, I want to see what happens when K is equal to L. That is, on the KL plane, we are along the 5, 45 degree diagonal. Okay? So, in order to see this, I want to turn, to turn this plot in such a way that I can see it from the side. Okay? So, this is what happens when... Uh, this is what you can see when k is equal to L. There is a growing function. And uh, you can imagine that something like this is happening when initially the production is highly inefficient and uh, a new technology arrives and as capital and labor increases, the output increases like this, faster than the first degree. Now, let's look at the Second case, I want to put here some numbers which sum to 1, like 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. This is the case of the case of constant returns to scale. So you can see the shape changes instead of initially what it, it was like. It was not concave, now it is concave. Okay, so the shape changes and we see again that the um, the origin is here at the lower left corner and as capital and labor rise then output rises and again in particular I want to see what happens when capital is equal to labor so in order to do that I turn turn this like approximately like this okay so when capital is equal to labor then along uh, along the 45 degree line on the capital labor plane we have a straight line okay so it, it uh, indeed the along this line the um, the output grows as a first degree and finally I look at the other case when we have decreasing returns to scale so I want to put here some numbers that sum to a number less than one like it could be one over four one quarter and here also one quarter okay the sum is one half let's see what happens in this case we can see that the uh, concavity increases okay again when ca capital and labor grow output grows but the at a small at a slower rate okay when capital is equal to labor here, this is what we get. That uh, when we increase the amount of capital and labor, keeping them equal to one another, this is what we get. This is like on the plane, more or less, uh, square root of uh, of x behaves like this. Okay. So, looks like this is all I have about that. The illustration of increasing constant and decreasing returns to scale. Next I want to look at the original definition. The authors of this production function, Cobb and Douglas, they chose multiplicative form of this function. Okay, And I want to illustrate this, why they chose that multiplicative form. This is that illustration. Uh, for this purpose, I use a contour plot. Okay, it's the same function as before. For the constant returns to scale, one half here, alpha is equal to one half, and beta is equal to one half. Okay, but this mesh function allows me to cut the surface with different planes, like here, for example. When I say, when I put here, here number one, it means that I cut the surface in this case it is let me first fix the plot like this okay so what happens is that uh, this is what th those curves is what is obtained when we cut the surface when one of the inputs is fixed in this case probably this is labor I wasn't able to put the labels for capital and labor on the axis 
anyway suppose that this is labor okay so when labor is fixed at 0 0.5 and we increase the amount cap of capital then this is what we obtain we move along the production function like that al along the surface or when the amount of labor is fixed here okay then we move along the production function like that this is how output grows now I want to turn a little bit this surface okay and see what happens as we increase the amount of capital that we use along this line along this axis the rate of growth of output depends on the amount of labor fixed okay if we fix it here this will be the rate of growth and it will be slower than if we fix amount the amount of labor here okay it will grow so Corbett Douglas when they came up with their definition they wanted this kind of dependence they wanted interaction between capital and labor they wanted the marginal product of capital to be dependent on labor and vice versa the marginal product of labor to be dependent on capital this is the main reason to uh, to have that multiplicative form okay and to compare with the different situation when we don't don't have a multiplicative form here I have another production function this is the production function 0 0.5 capital plus 0 0.5 labor okay and you can see the picture right here in this case this is this is a plane it's not like in those other cases something concave or con convex it's just a plane okay and what happens when one of the inputs is fixed we can see it like this okay so uh, we start from here for example it means that the amount of labor is fixed and for this line the amount of labor is fixed at a different level and we can see that the as we increase the amount of capital used then the rate of growth of the output is the same uh, no matter where we are right here or with a different amount of labor here okay so the additive form that we have here does not provide us th that interaction between capital and labor that we want okay thank you bye